Happy December, everyone. We may have had the nightmare before Christmas last week, but this week we have an actual ice type because next up we have Glalie. In addition to having a nice face and also being a face made out of ice, this Pokemon's been around since Ruby and Sapphire, where trainers would venture into the Shoal Cave to catch a snow run and then evolve it. Elite Four Glacia also thought Glalie was nice because her team had it twice. Today we'll be examining if this nice ice baby was able to be the face of the ice types or if it was just another vanilla ice type. And so so we ask, how nice was Glalie actually? But before we start, this holiday video is sponsored by, you guessed it, ExpressVPN. Whenever you connect to unsecure connections, you send out countless pieces of unencrypted information for everyone to see. However, a VPN provides a private connection and a virtual server that prevents anyone like governments, ISPs, and people connected to the same network as you from taking a look at the info you're sending out into the World Wide Web. ExpressVPN is the number one VPN service because of their ease of use and tons of premium servers located in many countries. And this feature is particularly useful because some content on streaming services are normally region locked depending on where you are in the world. For example, I can use ExpressVPN to unlock the full potential of my Netflix subscription. ExpressVPN allows you to change your IP address to a different country, which essentially unblocks region locked content. So I could do things like connect to Australia so I can watch Detective Pikachu or connect to the UK so I can watch Dragon Ball Super Broly or Rick and Morty, which isn't on Netflix in the US, even though it's a US show. Well, in any event, you can get all of this and more when you choose Express Express VPN. Find out how you can get three months free by clicking on the link in the description below. ExpressVPN.com slash FallSwipeGaming. And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Pure Ice types have it rough defensively, as they only resist ice moves. This, in conjunction with Glalie's meager defensive stat spread, meant it wasn't capable of switching in against many attacks at all. It was better offensively, as Explosion and Stab Ice Beam are great tools, while Spikes are of course excellent, but seeing as OU also had Regice and Cloyster, there wasn't really much Glalie could do to differentiate itself. Some players tried to make it work as a hyper-offensive Spikes lead with Salakberry, but it was generally outdone at this by the Spore-Packing Smeargle. Glalie was better in UU, but it still wasn't great, as it was generally outdone by Quillfish, who was also able to boom, and of course, the tier's primary spiker, Amistar, who was also one of the best Pokemon around. Glalie wasn't a bad Pokemon in UU, just usually not worth using over its competition. It dropped to NU, and there, it was finally able to shine. It was the premier offensive spiker and one of the best, most common leads. It could generally get down a layer or two of spikes and then take an opposing Pokemon down alongside it with Explosion, getting its team off to an excellent start. Glalie was a great user of Explosion, not just because of its serviceable attack stat, but because its strong Ice Beam dissuaded many normal resists, with the exception of Relicanth, which could be dispatched with HP Grass. Alternatively, Glalie could ditch Ice Beam and run an all-out physical set, which packed Earthquake to smack Relicanth, as well as Steels, Matang, Mawile, and Lairon. The attack investment also gave Explosion more of a kick, making it significantly more threatening against bulky Pokemon like Dugong. Glalie set the tempo perfectly for fast-paced hyper-offense teams, packing threats like Plusle, Murkrow, Haunter and Raticate that loved playing 5-5 with a spikes advantage. This was an excellent metagame defining niche and as such Glalie was one of the Pokemon that shaped most of what Gen 3 and you was. Stealth Rock was a death knell to a Pokemon who really didn't need any help struggling to keep up with its competitors. Glalie couldn't harbor any sort of niche in Yuyu, even after its superior new relative Frostlass was banned, as Glalie was once again entirely outdone by Quillfish and Amistar. However, it was quite solid in NU once again. It had strong spiking competition in Cacturn and Roselia, but it distinguished itself thanks to its great speed and explosion, which once again made it the best choice on fast-paced hyper-offensive teams, looking to abuse spikes as a way of of breaking through otherwise tough walls like Regirock and Slowking. Glalie's taunt was also great for preventing Regirock from stealth rocking, making its teammates like Charizard and Jinx more threatening. Thanks to its new Ice Shard, it could even reliably break the Focus Sash of even faster Pokemon while still getting a spike off early in the game, making it excellent at facilitating conditions for its teammates to be as threatening as possible. Glalie's complete lack of defensive utility meant it only really fit on hyper offense, but it was one of the best leads for that style of team. Glalie wasn't as influential on the metagame as in the previous generation, but it was still a great NU Pokemon that was crucial to the success of the teams it fit on.
Gen 5 made some attempt at making Glalie viable in OU. Unfortunately, it went a bit too far in doing so, because it did so by giving it Moody, one of the most hilariously broken abilities in the game. It was an ability that made even Bidoof broken, so just imagine what it did on Glalie. It would wait for the right boost, which wasn't hard thanks to Substitute and Protect, and proceed to destroy entire teams. Moody was such a comically busted ability that it even ripped through Ubers. Just picture Glalie tearing through Groudon, Kyogre, and friends, dodging their mighty moves with its evasion boost while hiding behind its substitutes and dishing out boosted ice beams. The ability was eventually banned from OU and Ubers alike, but no player of either of those tiers would ever forget the vicious beatings they received at the metaphorical hands of Glalie. Sadly, Moody's ban was the end of Glalie's viability in any Gen 5 tier. It couldn't even establish any sort of niche in NU anymore, as it was completely and utterly outclassed by Garbodor, who had toxic spikes and actual defensive utility, most notably a close combat resist, and the ability to absorb opposing toxic spikes while not being stealth rock weak. Garbodor was one of the metagame's most consistent Pokemon, while Glalie was incredibly inconsistent, which incidentally was the originally translated name for Moody before Black and White were released outside of Japan. Anyway, as a result of Glalie's complete uselessness, it sadly fell to untiered. On the bright side, it would always have that time where its moodiness led it to destroy Dialga and pummel Palkia. As nobody had any intention of suffering through Moody again, X and Y passed Glalie by, but Oraz gave it the revitalization it needed in the form of a Mega Evolution. Now, Mega competition was strong, and Glalie wasn't able to match the more monstrous variants running amok in OU, and even UU. However, it settled into RU as one of the tier's best Pokemon. In addition to gaining significantly buffed offensive stats, Mega Glalie was gifted the Refrigerate ability, which turned offensive normal moves into ice moves, and gave them a free 30% boost on top of that, which is essentially a drawbackless life orb. This meant that Glalie's lack of a traditional physical ice stab like Icicle Crash wouldn't hold it back. It could simply use double edge and hit incredibly hard. And of course, Refrigerate also applied to Explosion. Glalie couldn't always fit it into its moveset, but it was an absolute nuke of a move. The sixth generation also provided it with Freeze Dry, an ice type move that was super effective on waters, making it even more difficult to wall. Speaking of smacking would-be checks, bulky ice resistant Pokemon like Registeel and Embor could withstand even refrigerate boosted double edges, but Mega Glalie's high attack let it smack them hard with Earthquake. Ice Shard was also a great option for picking off faster Pokemon like Virizion. Mega Glalie wasn't a sweeper, rather more of a devastating powerful wall breaker that supported its teammates through the sheer damage it dished out, as well as the spikes it could set up on forced switches. Spikes which made both its teammates and its own attacks harder to wall. For example, Registeel could tank a couple Earthquakes from high health, but with spikes in the picture, it became a lot more contentious. The same one for Aloma Mola trying to withstand Freeze Dry. Speaking of Mola, it was so popular and irritating to deal with that some players used Block Toxic Rest Glalie to lure and completely destroy it. This set was obviously incredibly gimmicky, and Mega Glalie made its name for being an offensive menace, not Toxic Rest stalling, but it was worth mentioning anyway, as little was funnier than such a silly set being used to take out one of the tier's most impenetrable walls. Now, Mega Glalie wasn't perfect. It had strong competition in Camera Up, who wasn't Stealth Rock weak, and Sneak Sneasel was a fierce offensive ice type that didn't take up the Mega Slot. However, make no mistake, Mega Glalie was absolutely one of the best Pokemon in the RU metagame. It was entirely unique in what it did, providing spike support on top of being a fierce wall breaker in its own right, and thus providing its teammates with incredible depth of support. Mega Glalie was one of Oraz RU's most definitive dangerous threats and shaped much of the metagame as a result. Even with the addition of a new lowest tier in PU, regular Glalie wasn't able to re-establish its old niche as an offensive spike setter. It was largely outclassed in this row by two unevolved Pokemon. Yikes. Quilladin and Venipede. The former was bulkier with good defensive typing, and the latter was faster thanks to its speed boost, while being able to bring opposing Pokemon down to low HP with Endeavor. As a result, nobody used regular Glalie, and it unceremoniously returned to untiered. Gen 7 added lots of power creep while simultaneously nerfing Refrigerate's boost from 30% to 20%, leaving Mega Glalie unable to replicate its RU success. However, it was able to find a new home in NU, where its excellent traits came together to once again give it a unique place in the metagame. Its main draw was that it was a spikes user that Magic Bounce Zatu was deathly afraid of, meaning it never risked switching into it, which was a huge advantage over the main spiker, Garbodor. Another advantage was that Glalie was a huge 
defensive threat in its own right. While the refrigerate nerf meant it could no longer effectively use freeze dry, it was still plenty monstrous with its combination of double edge and earthquake. The tier's primary ice resist Incineroar wouldn't instantly be threatened by earthquake thanks to intimidate, but it didn't exactly shrug it off either, especially with spikes in the picture. Speaking of, that was once again another reason why Glalie was so threatening. Not only did its own spikes make it harder to wall long term for many checks, Glalie being able to lay spikes in front of bulkier walls like Vaporeon made its teammates a lot more threatening as well. It was also great for maintaining momentum with its powerful explosion, which left a huge chunk in any opponent and allowed for a free switch for a teammate, as well as being an emergency rapid spin blocker against Blastoise. As a bonus, Glalie didn't really have much in the way of mega competition or opportunity cost. The closest was Mega Obama Snow, which was a good Pokemon, but not so amazing that you were hindering yourself by using Glalie over it. Glalie still had next to nothing in terms of defensive utility, but it was still able to hit the field consistently with support from U-Turn and Volt Switch that tier staples like Passimian and Heliolus packed. Incidentally, the power of these switch forcing switch moves was amplified by Glalie's spikes. Mega Glalie wasn't fit for every team, but it provided terrific support without sacrificing its capability as an offensive threat and was a great Pokemon in Gen 7 and you. Once again, regular Glalie was hung out to freeze dry, unable to scrape the slightest semblance of a niche in even PU, since its old nemesis Quillfish was around to completely and utterly outclass it in every way. So chalk untiered placement number three up for old Glalie. Gen 8's removal of Megas was horrible for Glalie. Without its Mega Form, it couldn't accomplish anything whatsoever. Now, it did receive some nice new tools like Icicle Crash for physical ice stab, Switcheroo to cripple the opponent with a choice item, the option of heavy duty boots to ignore Stealth Rock, but its stats alongside its typing are just too much of a hindrance for it to compete even in PU. As such, Glalie is untiered once again, making its fourth appearance in the tier in as many chances. And barring some seriously good new moves in future Gen 8 installments, that does look to change. And that's it, so how good was Glalie actually? It's been a lower tier lifer. Well, besides that time in early Gen 5 when it ran wild with the Moody ability and terrorized both OU and Ubers. That was pretty funny. Beyond that though, it's been NU or untiered for the majority of its existence. Mega Glalie broke the mold in Gen 6, establishing itself as one of the best RU Pokemon, but even that couldn't last largely stemming from Gen 7's refrigerate nerf, and it returned to NU afterwards. Glalie is the balanced stats Pokemon, yes, but base 80 across the board just doesn't doesn't cut it anymore, and really hasn't cut it for a long time. Base 90 on the other hand would go a long way. Maybe it should even get a secondary dark typing as well for some extra stab, and a more useful ability while we're at it. Adaptability perhaps. These are some ideas Game Freak. None of these would make it overpowered, and Glalie deserves better than to languish uselessly in untiered limbo. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always if you liked the video and you want to see more be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments I want to know what do you think about competitive Glalie? How would you buff it? Because it seriously needs it. Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.